Hello and welcome to the dashboard course by Trump Excel. I'm Sumit Bansal and in this video I will show you how you can get the data ready and some data modeling tips. Now if you have created a dashboard in the past or imagine if you have not created a dashboard, imagine if you start creating it, what would your first steps be? We've already seen in the initial videos that you should always start thinking about what the message should be for which you're creating this dashboard and maybe start with the layout of the dashboard. Now this is all a good practice but often when you think about the layout and when you think about the message and then try to reverse engineer, we do not put in enough thought on the data models and dashboards are typically data driven which means that if you do not have a good data model to drive your dashboard it could become really difficult for you if you have to refresh your dashboard or if you have to change anything so in this video let me show you how you can create a good data model Ideally, your dashboard should have a minimum of three layers and these three layers is the data layer, the analysis layer and the presentation layer. Now your data layer is where you would hold the entire data. For example, uh, if you are creating a KPI dashboard and you import your data from a financial database, then you may have to refresh it again and again based on the year. If you're creating it for 2013, then next year you would have to put in 2014 data. So you would have to store that data somewhere. That should go into the data layer. Based on your data, then you need to do certain kinds of analysis. For example, if it is a KPI dashboard, you may want to calculate margins or you may want to create trends for past 12 months or three years. All that analysis can then go into the data, uh, the analysis layer, which means that your data layer would feed that data into the analysis layer. And then using that analysis layer, you can create a dashboard that could have charts, that could have tables, that could have interactive controls. So these are the three layers that you should have. Let me uh, quickly jump into the Excel sheet and show you a simple example. Here again, I have the tourism data, which is number of arrivals in millions for these 10 countries. I have the numbers for 2014 and 2015. So this data, which I have downloaded from uh, World Bank, and this is not the exact data, I've changed it to fit uh, the recent years, but this forms the data in my data layer. And if I have to update this data, all I need to do is just change the year. So for example, if I'm doing this analysis again next year, then I would simply put the 2015 data here in this column and 2016 data here in this column. So this makes me quite easy for, it makes quite easy to update this data because all I need to do is change this data set. There is no calculation involved in this layer, which means in this tab. Now I have a second tab, which is the analysis layer. Here I have all the analysis. You can see that everything is linked back to my original data. All these cells, it refers back to the data, which is data B3 and it refers to data C3 and all these formulas, analysis, conditional formatting, everything goes into the analysis layer. The idea is that if I change this data here, it would automatically update here in the analysis layer because it uses all the formulas. And based on this analysis layer, I have created a presentation layer. Here I only show them uh, the country name, the trend or the percentage change in the numbers and I show them the number of arrivals in millions in this chart. Now this is a very simple example. I'm sure your dashboard is going to be more difficult than this, this and it'll be it'll have a lot more parts to it. But the idea is that if you have these three layers intact, then it'll be easier for you to create this dashboard and you can easily refresh the data and your presentation layer would get updated. So whenever you're creating a dashboard, try and create at least these three tabs. And it's a good practice to keep it in different tabs because then it becomes manageable. And then if you think you need another tab for analysis, you're free to create another one. But the idea is have three distinct categories. One is for data, one is for analysis, and one is for presentation. While you're creating a dashboard and you're creating these three layers, which is the data layer, analysis layer, and presentation layer, 
it's a good idea to keep some tips in mind so that it can make your dashboard faster and easier to maintain. The first one is to remove extra data that is not being used. Now if you have extra data in your dashboard or in your Excel file, it's most likely increasing the size of your Excel workbook. I'm sure you have already seen workbooks which has the size of 10 MB, 20 MB or 40 MB. And I'm sure you can see that there is a lot of redundant data in the, those work files. So if you can remove the extra data, it would make your dashboard faster and it would improve the size of your file. Try and avoid volatile formulas. Example of volatile formulas include indirect formula, offset formula, and I'm sure you can find a way to avoid these formulas. If you apply these formulas to, an, to a big range and there are a lot of formulas, then it is bound to make your dashboard slower. I created a dashboard uh, initially in my job as an analyst and uh, it used a lot of indirect formulas and that used to slow down my dashboard. I had an interactive dashboard and as soon as I used to uh, change the scroll bar value, uh, the dashboard would take a couple of seconds to update and if you are creating a dashboard, uh, it is being presented to the senior management, then you would want it to be very dynamic. As soon as you make that click, it should update and it's really frustrating if you make a couple of changes and it takes a, a couple of seconds to update. So try and avoid volatile formulas. You should also avoid extra conditional formatting because even conditional formatting is volatile. Try and minimize conditional formatting because if you're using it everywhere, you are unknowingly making your file heavier and you are unknowingly making your dashboard slower. So try and avoid extra conditional formatting. As I showed you, I had three tabs for three different layers. Now it's not always necessary to have these three layers. Uh, there are certain cases where you may even have the data, the analysis and presentation in the same worksheet. But I would always advise you to separate it out. Have three tabs and have these data analysis and presentation uh, in your workbook stored separately because it is easier to maintain. And finally, if you're using images, compress these images because it can save you a lot of trouble. Your files would become lighter, the size would reduce, and your dashboards would become faster. So these are some tips that you can keep in mind while you're creating Excel dashboards. Always remember, keep your data in three layers. One should be a data layer, one should be an analysis layer, and one should be the presentation layer. That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Thank you and have a nice day.